Hey everyone, it's Colin here. Doing a wee daily driver video, um, featuring my white Rover 75. This one's been on the cards for quite some time, but just between one thing and the other, we haven't had a chance to get it done. This is a little video that I hope will inspire a few of you, um, maybe to go out and buy a lower spec Rover 75 and drive it every day. We know diesel is a dirty word in this day and age, but you know what, I personally think it's a fantastic way to get about. So this is a video all about my little everyday car. Um, it's imperfections, it's problems, things that maybe it's going to have to get done, etc. It's not really a project, it's a car that's in good enough condition that I can enjoy and drive every day. But like any of the cars that we own, they're always going to need a little bit of work. So hopefully you enjoy this. Please like, comment and subscribe as always in the videos. And uh, give me your feedbacks, etc. And there'll be more updates on the other project cars soon. But for now, this is the Daily Driver video. So yes, here we are. And you have to forgive the shadows here, folks, because we're at a weird sort of time of the day in my garden where the sun, as you can see, partially hits the car and partially does not. Um, things were a bit better earlier on, but then the rain came down. And I mean, boy, oh boy, did it come down. Everything's absolutely soaked. All that effort of putting all the nice trim, slick and everything, etc, etc, all over the car. But yes, here we are. This is my 2001 Rover 75 diesel manual dealer. Uh, classic spec. You'll notice as we've gone along here, there's been a few very minor upgrades, but I've chosen to try and keep the car as close to the original specification as possible. Um, mostly because I think the car doesn't really need a lot. Rover enthusiasts will see certain things straight away. Um, we have, for example, the projector headlights on it. The car didn't originally come with fog lights. That was a simple little retrofit. Uh, I myself have done a little black grill using Plasti Dip. I love Plasti Dip, it's one of my favorite things. You'll notice the number plate, but we'll talk about that later. Overall, the car is quite presentable. It's got a few faults. Um, a few parking scratches and scuffs. Unfortunately, with it being a white car, it seems to distinguish and show every single one every single time. And without fail, you can't seem to take it to the supermarket without somebody clipping it or dinging it or denting it or something like that. Um, but overall, she's a very, very presentable car. She's just, unfortunately, beginning to suffer that slight little problem with Rover 75s, which is the rear sill. I will have to put a rear sill on it very, very soon. Um, but with all my money currently tied up with Project Alice, that is just not on the cards at the minute. Uh, but it's unfortunately, it's only about two inches of damage. But when you're in there, you might as well do it all right. So let's go inside. And you can see, you'll see that these are we're in pandemic times, um, who knows, people will maybe be watching these videos in the future asking why do we have hand sanitizer and masks and things like that. Overall, an extremely presentable car. Hopefully this doesn't lose focus. Like I say, base spec, which means manual rear windows, which you can just see there. <laughs> So manual rear windows, um, and not a lot else, if I'm completely honest. Hold on, we'll pop in here. The wind's picking up. I'll move that camera slightly better towards. So, yes, here we are. Um, very, very early, 2001. I think, if memory serves, this car is made on the 4th of July. Something silly like that about it. I have done a few changes but not as many changes as people would imagine and um, the car came with a full walnut dash the proper pre-project drive ones and it's a lovely example and um, the walnut's very very nice unfortunately there is a chip here a bit bothersome but from whenever you're sitting in the driver's seat you can't see it um, I've also myself chosen to fit a very very early walnut steering wheel and um, this is one of the darkest i've ever managed to find i consider myself very very lucky it came off a 2001 car i had had set in us for a long long time wasn't sure if i was going to ebay it or not but i decided to keep it fair anyway 
Um, I sent the email off to, uh, sorry, the steering wheel off to Stuart, who refurbished it. He did a great job on the leather, brought the dye up, etc., etc. And when he was there, I asked him to re-dye my walnut gear knob as well. This didn't originally come in the car. And by re-dye, I mean he, like, re... I got him to basically balance the... Uh, the wood, the wood had faded quite badly, and the lacquer was fading quite badly. So he went it all over. Um, overall result, I think, is okay. It's not bad. Um, we were worried that there would be some blurring um, from the one, two, three, four, five. I really wasn't worried about that um, because it was so badly faded that, frankly, it didn't match the car at all. So to me, that just adds a little bit of more character to it. Elsewise, everything else is completely standard Rover 75, um, except for the center console here. Now, it's not exactly what I would call the best quality of uh, angle of light here, so you'll maybe forgive me if I change that round a little bit. This is, um, oh, loud, loud, loud. Well, that's this video We're probably going to get demonetized. So, yes, a little Android double din. Um, this is one of the ones that I famously imported, to my knowledge, and I'm not blowing smoke up my own arse here when I say this, a long, long time ago, um, I famously imported what is generally recognized to be the first of these MG7 double din trims. Um, they weren't known about, they weren't generally retailed at the time, they're very very common now, you can buy them on eBay. Um, at the time I had a different blue tour and I bought, picked up one of these Android double din units. Now this is what's called a mechless unit, so there's no CD player, there's no DVD player etc. Um, but it still does do everything you know you would need it to do, it does your sat nav etc etc. And it also still does, you know, you can do wee cheeky things, you know, there's YouTube on it and all as well. And if you want to have Android software on it as well, you can. Um, very, very basic unit. The radio itself and the uh, trim at the time, I think I don't even have 80 quid invested into this. There is another video on it. You'll also see that I have the 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 faux <laughs> faux walnut surround on it. It's the only parts of the car that I've put the fake walnut on. Um, otherwise she's completely standard. Um, she has I've just I just switched it on. Decided to give me a warning light for something, so we'll need to check out what that is. I have a feeling it's probably the number plate bulbs. But yes, um, otherwise completely standard Rover seventy five. We don't have auto dimming mirror we don't have a uh, driver's um vanity mirror oh dear god just maybe that's a sign that i need to change it um we don't have illuminated passenger one or anything like that i do have ones for it but i don't know if i really should put them into the car or not um the windscreen's original so i really don't know if i ever would want to you know put an auto dimming mirror into this car because of it there's a great deal of appeal of having a very, very basic car. Um, as for the mileage itself, you can just see that there. She's got 89,000 miles on her, which for 2001, um, pretty, pretty good to say the least. Under the bonnet is, as you would expect, if any of you guys have saw some of my other videos, um, you've seen me maintaining the vehicle over the years. I've now had this vehicle for just under three years. Actually, tell a lie, I think it's four years now. Hold on. Four years now. Um, I try to keep the vehicle very, very presentable. Uh, as you can see, by it's not easy keeping old English white clean. Um, it's a bit of a nightmare, to say the least. I usually give the car a wash at least every fortnight um, by hand, where possible. There is minor minor issues starting to come through i mean there's a tiny tiny rust spot starting to come through in the bonnet there and um, which i'll probably deal with rather than get worse sooner than later but overall as you can see um rover 75 diesel manual fuel burn heater and um, that reminds me it's winter's coming it uh, stopped functioning on me there so i need to get that sent away
Now those of you who know the Rover 75s will spy a few things out of place here. Uh, number one, at this stage, they didn't have black expansion tanks, so <laughs> that's obviously off an earlier car. Um, the washer cover, that's from a Range Rover P38B. Uh, the black oil cap, which should be yellow, is from a E39. You're also going to see a few other wee bits and pieces as well. Um, that's a bush gauge there for my turbo. And you'll also notice, if you can just see it there, that the car, and just see it there and no more in this light, the car has the MAF disconnected because I have a MAFless remap in the car. We'll go into that in more detail as we're driving the car. I think it's a stunning car. I receive a lot of positive comments about it. Um, I picked the car up for £900. Since I've had the car, I've put in spring shocks, clutch, uh, water pump, and a few other bits and pieces as well, plus the interior. Time for brakes. Brakes are coming up here very, very shortly. Um, I'm going to be doing um, tech discs on it as well. As for the boot and rear end, again, nothing spectacular. Swan neck, tow bar, single point. I did think it was a bit cheeky putting a, a black CDTI badge on the car. Um, I debadged the car of the 75 there and the uh, Union Jack flag, unfortunately. Living in Northern Ireland, there can be times where you have a vehicle with Union Jack flags are not the best. You'll also see here a chrome reversing camera. And those of you who know your cars and 75s will see that I have the early Rover plinth. Uh, fitted instead of the one that has the badge here. I just there's something about that to me is far classier um, I was never a fan of the boot on the badge But to me, that's that's lovely and that's why I think they brought that back in a mark II. It just looks brilliant boot wise <sighs> Nothing special um, as you can see by the wiring I have to get around to doing the rear camera wiring it up very very soon, but um, other than that I just try to keep the car clean. You know, it's not an easy job with a, a white car, believe me. I dare say there's a few Rover 75 owners here are looking at this going, okay, that's that's pretty clean. But to be fair, it's just been, you know, properly given its two, three month big bath. So yeah, um, she's currently sitting on crowns as you can see um quite ironic you know i know crown shouldn't be on a uh a july 2001 they should really be comets not comets um oh, the other ones i'll put up a picture of them now it should really be the other ones but at the end of the day this car didn't actually come with these it uh, it came with the uh, oh my word this is terribly embarrassing for Someone who wrote the Rover 75 Buyer's Guide to be forgetting the names of the different alloys. I've just went completely blank. But anyway, it's it's on these for now. Um, I had a set of four with four matching winter tyres. And as winter is coming, I thought it was very, very appropriate. You've seen in pictures before that it had meteors on it as well. Um, when it was filmed at Pride of Longbridge, it had meteors on it. I They're a very nice set I have that I'm keeping for my limousine which is down the bottom there it's the next thing ready to go but yeah we'll take a wee spin here and i'll talk to you about it a bit more in detail when we're in the car and that's a light overview of the outside of it um as we drive it hopefully you'll get a bit more of an insight into why i would suggest that a rover 75 diesel would actually make for the ideal daily driver for you so here we are the Rover 75 in its natural environment, the supermarket. Yes, so why do you ideally a Rover 75 diesel? Well, this part's just going to be quite short, mostly because of economy. I don't know too many people that would be willing to drive a 20 year old diesel manual car in this day and age. It's so easy to get. Uh, monthly payments and hard purchase of buying a vehicle, etc., etc., that 
frankly, it's no wonder everything's become so obsolete and we've become such a throwaway society. It's getting tragic, actually, whenever you look at it. That's always been part of my ethos, and part of why I started Robson Rover Repair was, you know, documenting the cars that I work on and I save, because who knows, all it takes is one bad crash and that car's gone, or something happens, and, you know, before you realise it, you know, you're selling that car, etc. And I've been there before, you know, I've had cars that I've had to sell on for personal reasons, and it circumstances etc but yeah so it's let's say it boils down to finances and economy and let's look at the economy of this my over 75 cost me 900 pound when I bought it it had 76,000 miles on it it's currently just shy of 89,600 miles and um, that's in the last three years or so I did leave it parked up for a few months there while well, it was a weight in the clutch um, just because of my own health reasons and between COVID and things like that I wasn't attending work so you know hey eh, no point getting the thing fixed if you're not driving it but yeah so cost but this also being a 2001 example the road tax for this is 200 pound a year I just taxed my V6 there the other day, my MGZ TV6. That's cost me £340 for the year. For a car that does, at best, half the fuel economy of this car. So all of a sudden, you know, you start looking at the, the thought process behind it. You sort of say to yourself, yeah, okay. And fuel economy is a big thing as well for me. Um, I'm not a hard driver. Certainly not when I'm in the 75s. My ZTs, yeah, maybe drive a wee bit harder then. Since I've had the car, I tried to keep a track of log initially. Um, the car, when I first got it, was base spec, 115. Math was in very good condition. Still actually is. Um, and I was averaging 48 to the gallon then. I work in the same place that I work in and then, you know, I'm doing the same distances and driving, etc, etc. And since then I've had a mathless remap, a uh, bush controller installed. And that's been it. No other, you know, mechanical changes, etc. As I said, I've had the clutch replaced. That's been it. That's been all that this vehicle has received. Um, it runs on 15-inch tyres that are winter tyres. They're not particularly fancy or anything like that. But all four are matching. And because of that, I'm now getting about 52, 53 miles to the gallon average. My daily drives, well, one of my jobs, it's about 15, 16 miles, dual carriageway and motorway, so I'm sitting at 70 mile an hour the whole way there. And then my other job is a mixture of single lane carriageway and country roads. So unfortunately, it's not so good for uh, fuel economy. It still averages out about you know 52, 53 to the gallon, and that's not obviously following the trip computer because this 75 being base spec doesn't have a trip computer. Not that you should ever follow the trip computer on a 75 anyway. So what else have I done to the car? Well, I've done a few minor, minor things. You have seen the videos where I do the PCV bypass. I'll do the video up above here now. Um, that was done in this car. Uh, I was quite fortunate, and I still can't remember to this day, did I do the PCV bypass that was in the car when I filmed the video? When I got the car, or did I buy the car with one in it? It's hard to know the difference, because I've bought and sold that many cars in the last decade, all Rover 75s, and etc, etc. It's hard to keep track. And when I sell them, I usually sell them with a standard of workmanship behind them that I would say I would want in a car that I purchased. So, I did the PCB bypass. I did an EGR bypass as well. You can see that in the video um, up above. On top of that as well, I actually have changed that uh, EGR bypass since. Um, my own fault, I was in sorting something out in the engine bay and I dropped a large hammer and it cracked the 
pipe that the EGR bypass was on. So I ended up bypassing at the block. Fortunately, the kits that I purchase come with all the stuff to bypass at the block. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a hoarder, so I don't really throw away bits and pieces like that. I keep them all together. I always like to keep all the original EGR valves and things like that, so that should the car ever need to be returned back to standard, it can. And bar that, it's a completely standard 75. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, does the uh, remap make a difference to the car, along with the boost controller. I don't think that little Honda Civic liked the fact that I was accelerating beside him there. <laughs> I wasn't racing, no one shouted me. Um, so yes, it's mostly about economics. 15 inch tires are cheap, you know, parts are cheap. It's an easy car to work on. Anyone can work on a Rover 75. And honestly, there's nothing else like it in most people's car parks. Unless you go to a Rover event, how when was the last time you saw a Rover 75 sailing around? They're just disappearing off the streets. And now is the time to buy one if you want to own one. They're just over 20 years old. Most insurance companies now will insure them on classic insurance policies. I have a few on classic insurance as well, as you've seen. And that's it. But yeah, a little silly video all about my everyday daily driver. I know it's not exactly thrilling. I had planned to record more footage, but fortunately I've now discovered that GoPros seem to heat up at 4K resolution extremely, extremely quickly. I have to admit I'm very disappointed with the GoPro so far. I had expected a much better quality product. Um, but hey, that is what it is. I'll maybe try sort of like a heat sink case on it or something next. But overall, as an everyday car, does it have aircon? Well, it has an aircon switch that does work. What would I change about it? I would love it that it was an automatic. I have no doubt in my mind that would be the only thing I would change about this car. If I was being really facetious, an automatic tour would be even perfect. But at the minute, I don't need it. But we don't know what's around the corner at Robson Rover Repair. There's a lot of things changing and a lot of things happening in the immediate and far future. So that may happen anyway. Now, if it does happen that I have to sell this car on, well, I can say to myself, you know, it's had clutch, it's had, you know, well-maintained, it's a good car, good example, it's a nice car to you. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind I'll probably regret selling this one if I ever do sell it. So yeah, maybe that'll inspire you not to turn your nose up at the base spec Rover 75s when you see them. Because at the end of the day, this is a base spec car with cloth, no digital aircon, no heated seats, no cruise control, uh, no electric rear windows, uh, no rear sense of wipers, no parking sensors, no auto dimming mirrors, nothing, you know. And all as you've seen, the upgrades are all I've done, to it, as you saw in the videos. So get on Gumtree, get on your websites, get on bought. Because the diesels are going to start disappearing. They really, really are. And as they try and force diesel owners away from owning these cars, because ultimately that is what they're up to at the minute. I firmly believe that in the next few years, diesel cars are going to be more and more valuable. The petrol crisis that's happening in the UK, and the fueling crisis that has been artificially created, is proof of that. People had moved away from diesel, and now people are crying out for an economical car that you can fill, put five, six hundred litres of fuel into it, uh, sorry, 50 or 60 litres of fuel into it, and get six or seven, eight hundred miles out of it. Uh, people are now going, oh, electric cars, they're starting to raise the price of gas, they're starting to raise the price of electric. Petrol and diesel is expensive enough as it is. So you have to sit back and say to yourself, it's better to have an older car that's simpler to maintain and cheap to run, or have a modern car with all the expense and cost and problems and still have maintenance and costs associated that modern cars 
seem to chatter in. I know what I'd rather have, and that's why I own so many of these cars. Because they are a great everyday car. They are a great family car. Loads of people I know have used these. Two, three kids. You comfortably get two child seats in the back. Not ISO fix, but that's another matter. That will be discussed in a later video. Good room, good comfort, great armrests. You, know, you, know, you need to be a pretty big person not to be able to enjoy an older 75. But anyway, I'll come to the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed my little everyday car. I know it's a bit of a boring video, but I wanted to do something fun because everything's been so serious recently with Project Alice. And there's a follow-up video of that coming soon. So guys, out and about, enjoy my cars, I hope you do the same, get off your backside, and as we always say at Robson Road for Repair, buy it, build it, break it, blog it. I want to thank everyone who was buying a uh, key ring, we sold 74 of the 75 of them, and we're building up a massive special box for Cancer Research UK, which will be auctioned off, there'll be a separate video about that very, very shortly. And meantime, if you do want to support the channel in any way, shape or form, if I've helped you out, um, please nip to my eBay shop and buy an air freshener. We have new scents coming in at the end of October and a restock of existing ones. So catch us in the next video. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff that everyone always asks. See you later, folks. Thanks for your time.